Connect. Discover. Explore. Hi everyone, welcome to the Science Education Resource Center at San Jose State University. Today, we are sharing an experiment with you called Go Green to Grow Green. This investigation is for middle school and high school students studying energy and dynamics of ecosystems. We will observe how variation in temperature can affect the photosynthetic rate of plants by performing a simple experiment with an aquatic plant called the anacharis. So, let's get started. First, let's take a minute to review the basics of photosynthesis and respiration. Photosynthesis is a process by which plants take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, absorb water, and use the energy from sunlight to produce sugar and oxygen. Respiration is a process by which plants use the sugars produced by photosynthesis to create ATP. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is a universal energy source which all living things use to do work. As part of this investigation, we will look at the effects of temperature on photosynthesis. To get started, you should set up three temperature stations. Station one should have a heat lamp turned on prior to the start of the experiment with the test tube rack underneath. Station two should have a bucket filled with ice and station three should have a test tube rack at room temperature. The materials you need to have are one nine milliliter glass test tube, one test tube rack, one red liquid thermometer, one 100 milliliter graduated beaker, diluted phenol red, one 30 milliliter syringe, one 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, one two hole rubber stopper, one piece of plastic tubing, one tablespoon of baking soda, 30 milliliters of vinegar, and one three inch anacharis sprig. Now that you have all of your materials, let's create the CO2 generator. This CO2 generator will be used to enhance carbon dioxide levels in order to promote photosynthesis within the anacharis plant. First, take your 100 milliliter beaker and pour in 50 milliliters of phenol red. The phenol red is a pH indicator that is used to estimate the amount of carbon dioxide present. Now, take your flask and add your baking soda. Then, take your stopper, which has two holes, and place your plastic tubing in the larger hole. Secure the rubber stopper with the plastic tubing into your flask and completely submerge the other end of the plastic tube into your beaker and have a partner hold it. Then, with your syringe, Take 30 cc's of vinegar, place it in the second hole, and slowly inject your vinegar into the baking soda and see what's going to happen. By bubbling carbon dioxide through the solution, it will turn the phenol red acidic, creating the color change from red to yellow. The more acidic the phenol red, the longer it will take the anacharis to absorb the carbon dioxide. When you're done injecting vinegar into your flask, cover that second hole so that all of your carbon dioxide goes into your beaker and hold it there until it stops bubbling. Now that you have your acidic phenol red solution, fill your test tube three-fourths full with the solution like this. Set the test tube with the solution and a thermometer at one of the lab stations once your solution has reached the appropriate temperature, submerge your sprig of anacharis upside down into the test tube and see what will happen. As the anacharis sits inside the solution, oxygen bubbles will form. The count of the bubbles will determine the photosynthetic rate of the anacharis plant at a certain temperature during the fixed time. Observe and record the number of bubbles generated at each station every minute for five minutes on this data sheet. There will be different outcomes at each station, so be sure to make thorough observations and visit all three stations. 
After you have filled out the data table, use your observations to graph your results and complete the additional questions. Why do you think the bubbles occur? What temperature was photosynthesis most efficient? Is global warming good for plants? We hope you have fun discussing these interesting questions with your team members. Great job, everyone! Keep your eye out for more science investigations from the Science Education Resource Center at San Jose State University.